Standing here in your presence In a grace so relentless I am one Oh, by perfect love Right within the arms of heaven In a peace that lasts forever Sinking deep in mercy see I'm one
This week's Sunday service, and I hope everyone is doing well at home throughout this whole week. And as we begin today's service, let's just commit this time to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. We thank you for blessing us abundantly. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe throughout this whole week. We thank you that you have provided for us. We thank you for everything, O oh Lord. Lord, as we commit this time to your hands, Lord, we pray that you will come and be with us, you will come and lead us, you will come and guide us as we come and worship you, as we come to hear from you, Lord, we pray you open our hearts, open our eyes, that we see you, open our hearts, let our hearts be ready to be planted with your word, O oh God. Lord, as we come together as one people, O oh Lord, to seek your face, we pray, Lord, we lift your name up high. Let your presence come, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Stop. 
church it's good to be able to join you this morning for a time of holy communion and i believe that most of us remembers that when uh, jesus instituted the holy communion he said do this as often as you eat it and drink it in remembrance of me and uh, this morning's uh, holy communion uh, uh, title or if you can set a small devotional for it is entitled forget not and i want us to uh, turn to uh, psalm 103 if you have your bibles with you to verses 1 to 5 and uh, I'm particularly looking at verse 2 and let's read from the beginning it says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquity who heals all of your diseases redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. You know, as, as we read through this psalm, you know, some of us might be wondering that, you know, it's a nice psalm and, and I believe that the people in those days, as they heard this particular verse, you know, it brought a lot of comfort and, and encouragement to them. And I'm sure it does to each and every one of us. But if you really go a little bit more deeper, you know, one of those things that I really uh, love to do is I try to look at what, how does it, uh, uh, fit into my timeline? How does it fit into our timeline as New Covenant believers? And if you really look at this psalm, I think most of us would know that this is really speaking prophetically about the Messiah. Now, how do I know that? It says here, 
you know, forget not all his benefits. First of all, it's a command to ourselves. The psalmist is telling us to command ourselves. It's so important, friends, every day for us to stop in the midst of everything that is going on, especially in the time and the season that we live in today, to stop, to pause, and to command ourselves, especially when we are overwhelmed with fear, with confusion, with uncertainty, with discouragement, whatever situation we may be in, whether it's in our workplace, whether it's in our home, wherever we, we may be, you know, some of us are working from home, you know, the psalmist implores us. It's, it's time, that there are times that we just need to pause and we need to ask our soul, command our soul to bless the Lord, O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Now, why don't you take a few moments this morning as we get ready to take Holy Communion to pause and tell your soul, come on soul, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless His holy name. You know, and he goes on to say, you know, how do I know that this is speaking about the cross, about the time that is coming? He says, forget not all his benefits he tells us how to bless our bless the lord how how do we tell our soul to bless the lord you know the way we do it is to remember all his benefits now it's good you know some versions say who daily loads us with benefit and that itself is good but you know what it's speaking about christ and he says you know how how do we do that how do we forget not all his benefits we he we remember that he has forgiven us of all our iniquities and healed us of all our diseases now let's pause for a while did that happen in the time of the old covenant were all their iniquities forgiven were all their diseases healed this is obviously speaking about a time that is coming the time in the season in which you and i are in the time and season when christ came and took all our sins upon himself and all our diseases upon himself, all church. And this is the time of the fulfillment. And speaking, you know, how do we remember? How do we forget not all his benefits? You know, as, as I was just meditating on this, this, just these two words came up to me. Church, we need to take time to forget not, forget not, forget not. And so, what do we forget not? We need to forget not what Christ has done on the cross for each and every one of us. Remember what he said, do this as often as you eat it and drink it in remembrance of me. So as we get ready to partake of the Holy Communion this uh, uh, morning, I just want to encourage us to forget not what Jesus has done on the cross. You know, Christ has made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He's taken all our sins upon himself. And he tells us to remember that he has healed us. So as we partake of the communion, remember the cross, remember Christ, remember his unconditional love for each and every one of us. And what does that do? The Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. So church, this morning, as we get ready with the Holy Communion, you know, we're going to read the uh, uh, exchange made at the cross and then immediately we will partake of the Holy Communion. So let's get our emblems and get ready to partake of the Communion together. Let's read the Divine Exchange together. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. Jesus died our death that we might receive his life. Jesus endured our poverty that we might share his abundance. Jesus bore our shame that we might share his glory. Jesus endured our rejection that we might have his acceptance with the Father. Jesus was made a curse that we might enter into the blessing. Jesus was cut off that we might be joined to the Lord eternally. Our old man was put to death in him that the new man might come to life in us. Amen. Amen. Let's take our communion emblems. Lord, we just want to thank you and we want to praise you that you remind us to forget not, forget not, forget not this morning. No matter what situation we may be in, no matter where we are, Lord, this morning, we want to open our hearts, 
and we want to stop and pause and we want to command our soul to bless you with all that is within us to bless your holy name. We remember, Lord, that you have forgiven us of all our iniquities. You have made us a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that this morning, Jesus, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon you. And by your stripe, Lord, we are healed. We remember you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shall we partake of the bread together? And the cup. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come to the time of giving as we hold our offerings in our hands. Let's uh, get our envelopes with the dates uh, marked for today and uh, place our offerings in the envelope and, uh, and give thanks to the Lord for this privilege of being able to return to the Lord what rightfully belongs to Him. Our token of love and appreciation. Father, we want to thank you as we continue on this time of worship, we thank you, Lord, that you have provided for all our needs, Lord, according to your riches. We are declaring that, Father God, not according to our riches, not according to the economy of this world, but you have provided for us according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And we receive, Lord God, your provision for every single one of our needs, Lord, this morning. We give you praise. The spirit of poverty is broken over our lives and he who the son of man sets free is free indeed jesus it is because of you that we can give we give you praise and we give you thanks in jesus name we pray amen amen you know as we uh get to the time of uh reading our weekly declaration let's read it with a with a, a sense of confidence that in spite of what we see with our natural circumstances God is still at work can we say a big amen to that God is still working behind the scenes especially you know it's when we least expect that God is working that's when God is expecting God is working the most so let's let's read this declaration because we are the sons and daughters of God through what Christ through the finished work of the cross we are the sons and daughters of God we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear church at this time, but we have received the spirit of adoption by whom we can cry, Abba, Abba, Daddy, God, because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's read this church. We declare, amen, that we are sons and daughters of Almighty God. We are born for such a time as this to save Malaysia. We declare that our prayers are impacting Malaysia in incredible, positive ways. We declare that our prayers for our national leaders are bringing peace, safety and radical conversions to our land. We declare that God is raising up men and women of courage, righteousness and supernatural favour to guide us into a great season of blessing and prosperity as a nation. We declare that the presence of the righteous in our nation, in our land, protects it from disasters, plagues and poverty. We declare that there is an increasing number of people that God is strategically placing in government, media, entertainment, education and other key parts of society. We declare that in a single day, whole cities and regions are being transformed by the radical love and the power of God. We declare that radical conversions are happening all across our nation with people forsaking sin, coming to Jesus, getting water baptized and becoming powerful leaders in Malaysia. We declare that we are part of a massive number of people in Malaysia that God is pouring out a fresh anointing to shake our nation. We declare that our hope is growing for what God is doing 
and will do in Malaysia. We declare shalom, the peace of God over Malaysia. The weak and poor will be protected and cared for. We declare that honesty, integrity and justice will prevail over our nation. We declare that the radical love of God will flood Malaysia. Amen. All fear and intimidation is arrested in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare that the wealth of the nations will pour into this land and Malaysia will be the model rainbow nation that it has been prophesied to be. We declare that the kingdom of God is advancing in Malaysia, that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, that last second last slide is really rings true now with the economy and the things that are happening in the natural world. We, are, we continue to declare the kingdom of God and the prophecy that has been spoken over Malaysia, over, over this land. So I, I want to encourage church, remember we are not under the economy of this world, but we are under the economy of Almighty God. That's what our confession needs to be. Remember, according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus, not according to the riches of this world. So I want to commit uh, each one of us into the Lord's hands as we prepare our hearts and get ready to, uh, uh, to, uh, to listen to the uh, Word of God uh, that is being brought to us by Pastor Abel. So God bless you, church, as you listen to the Word and uh, enjoy you know, the Word of God. Enjoy the goodness of God and the finished work of Christ on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, church. Greetings to all in Jesus' name. Praise God that we serve an awesome God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We invite your Holy Spirit to guide us and teach us through your word. We commit each one into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title for today is Facing Challenging Times or What to Do When Bad Things Happen. There's been a lot of talk about coronavirus or COVID-19, about why we are experiencing this, why we need to go through this. We may not have all the answer to the why, but we just need to remember the who, that God is in control regardless of the why. So we are going to look today in the book of Job, the oldest book in the Bible, and see what God has for us. So turn your Bible, to the word of God, Job chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 3. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, and the one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Indeed, Job is seen here as a wealthy man living in the land of Uz, with his large family and extensive flocks. He was blameless, upright in the sight of God, always careful to avoid doing evil. But if you continue in verse 6 onwards. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came along among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Verse 9, So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made an age around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand, and his possession have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand, and touch all that he has, 
and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on this person. In other words, God was saying, you cannot take his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Here what's happening. The Lord is having a conversation with Satan and the Lord brings up the subject of Job. And the Lord took joy in Job and, and, he, and he said, this, he, Job was his sweet servant. In fact, the Lord, the Lord was blessed by the life of Job. He was proud of Job. So the Lord said, Satan, have you considered Job? The devil said, wait a minute. The only reason that Job loves you is because what you do for him. You've been so good to him. You put a age of protection around him. In other words, the devil was saying, the reason he serves you is because he is wealthy. He is happy. He, he has a big family. He has good health. You take away all that from him and he will curse you to your face. Now that's the question we must consider. Do we love God because of what God has given us or what God has blessed us? Or do we just love God for who He is? That's about, think about that question. If your blessing has been taken away right, right now, would you still love God as much as you love Him at this moment? There's a lot of people who love God because God is blessing. If something bad happens, those people are taken up, those, those blessings are taken away. I think many of them will turn away from the Lord. I want you to think about what we can do when challenging times or when bad things happen to us, like this COVID-19 or this coronavirus. What can we do when experiencing a worldwide pandemic or some other types of crisis in our lives? There are three things that I want to share from the Word of God through the life of Job. The first thing from this story is that we learn when bad things or challenging things happen, challenging times happen to us, we should continue to love God. When the Lord took down the age of protection and the devil killed Job's children with a great tragedy, Job lost all of his children, seven sons and three daughters, in just a moment of time. Then on the heel of that horrible tragedy, tragedy the Bible tells us that the devil stripped Job of all his wealth. He was very wealthy and overnight he became very poor. But the, the devil hasn't finished yet. Next, Satan attacked Job's health. He was stricken with balls all over his body. Horrible condition from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet with balls. When the people or his friends were gossiping about Job, they said to one another, I wonder what has happened to Job. I wonder what sin Job has committed that God has led him to be like this? You know, there are people, people who say things like this, and, and especially in those days, they say this, if you are wealthy, healthy, and rich, they consider it's a sign that these people were right with God. But all those things were taken away from them. It is a sign that they have committed or you have committed some kind of sin that you don't have enough faith that you were not right with God. You know, that crowd is still around us today. They believe if you have enough faith, you're going to be wealthy and you will never get sick. But you and I know that's not true. Sometimes people do get sick and we go to God. We ask God to heal us. We pray before God and ask God to heal us. 
So you and I must see Job's relationship with God was not based on what some type of false doctrine. We can see this in Job 13 verse 15. In Job 13 verse 15 the Bible says, "Though he slay me, yet I will trust him." Job says, "Though God slay me, I will trust him." In other words, Job made up his mind to love God no matter what. Hallelujah. You know, even though things he was right before God, but things were going against him, but he still loved God. He continued to love God. There's another story in the Bible about the story of Elijah. He did great miracles. He did what was right in God's sight. But the next moment he was running away from Jezebel. He was asking himself, I did the right thing. And he, and he began to go to this pity patty uh, about himself, crying, crying before God, take my life. Life is not always easy. Problems, trials, troubles do come our way. You know, people respond to difficult situation or the things they face in different ways. Two people may face the same type of problem or trials or testing. One one of it will draw closer to God and the other seems to push further away from God. So the question is is this for us today? How will we respond during this coronavirus or this COVID-19? How will we respond when things are difficult to us? Will we use that as an opportunity to love God? Will we choose to walk away from God? I tell you my dear brothers and sisters, if we choose to continue to love God in our difficult moment, in our trials, in our testing and challenging times in our life, it will shun the devil's mouth. The devil says he or she serves God because the blessing God gives. But God says no, they just love me for who I am. Let's continue to love God for who he is. So when bad thing happens, don't choose to walk away from God. Walk to him. Continue to love God. The second point that I want to bring is we see in this story that Job teaches us that we should continue to serve God. We saw continue to love God, he continue to serve him too. When bad thing happen to us in our life, instead of focusing on the bad things, on the problems, it helps us to render ourselves busy by serving God on and reaching out to others through service to God. We can draw in our problems we can be drawn into our problems or we can continue to serve God so you you we see how does job serve God job had three friends who came to him to see him and they they had all the bad advice they had full of bad advice they told him to figure out what he has done wrong and and told him to repent of it they were the sin seeking committee and they came to investigate job's sin job 19 verse 14 says if you see job 19 verse 14 we see how job felt about his friends he says my relatives have failed me and my fr- close friends have forgotten me and again in job 19 verse 19 he says all my close friends abhor me and those whom i love have turned against me they pointed their finger in judgment to him dear church my brothers and sisters when we are going through bad times challenging times sometimes even our friends walk away we also learn that when everybody walks away god is enough i've experienced this in my own life when people have rejected me and walk away God is still there. That God is really all that you and I need. So we continue to love God and we continue to serve God. Job I'll put it this way. Job's relatives for for forsake him and his friends turned away. His own wife said, "Why don't you curse God and die?" But Job sat there in silence, broken-hearted. 
his body covered with balls grieving in his soul and what did he do he continued to serve god how did he serve god do you know he continued to if you continue to read the the, the word the story you'll find that he continued to pray he began to pray for his friend he began to pray over the situation you and i can do that during this time of difficulty we can pray we can pray for the world we can pray for the frontliners who are out there we can pray for those affected the families that are affected those who have lost their loved ones due to covid-19 we can pray for them pray that god can use us that god brings healing over this world this universe provocation for our neighbors for our families we can all pray so that is serving god sometimes when you're helpless difficult times just sit there and pray like job prayed pray for others who are suffering and the third point that i want to bring is job continued to trust god you know job continued to love god job continued to serve god and job continued to trust god when bad things happen during this challenging and trial times we are hurting we don't know why sometimes we just can't understand the reasons why we need to go through this You know I've been asked by many people this question. They say pastor, why this? Why that happened to us? Why that happened to my family? Why why did my baby die? Why is my son born like this? Or why I have lost this job or, or many other thing. My spouse has a cancer or, or why my my father has left us. There are so many why's. I may not have all the answers and I don't know the answers to the why's. But the thing I know is that God loves you and that you can trust him. God loves you and you can trust him. Job 23 verse 1 to verse 5 says. Then Job answered and said, "Everybody, sorry, even today my complaint is bitter and my hand is less listless because of my groaning oh that i knew where i might find him that i might come to his seat i would present my case before him and i will and and fill my mouth with arguments i would know the words which he could answer me job was simply saying this if i can find god i'm going to ask him all the questions i want an answer from him job was struggling like that Sometimes we too struggle like that when bad things happen to us. Keep in mind even at this point in Job's life he still stands right with God. Though his friends accuse him, he don't understand why and and there will be time like that in our life. What would we do? There's a scripture in the Bible you can jot down this this scripture. Isaiah 50 verse 10. Isaiah 50 verse 10 Who among you fears the Lord who obeys the voice of his servant who walks in darkness and has no light let him trust the name of the Lord and rely upon him let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God We ought to continue to love God we ought to continue to serve God and we ought most of all no matter what we ought to continue to trust god what we saw in isaiah 10 refers to someone who truly honors and worship god and puts god first but he was walking they were they who were walking in the time of darkness they were going through challenging difficult times walking in the time when they have no light they are going through trials and the bible says let him trust in the name of the lord and rely upon his god the word rely literally means to lean upon so the bible tells us to trust god and to lean upon him you know god is our light in the darkness darkness cannot chase the light away we cannot go into a room and turn on darkness or dark but we can turn on the light and the light will chase the darkness away 
And Paul puts it in a beautiful way in 2 Corinthians 4.18. Uh, sorry, 4.8. 2 Corinthians 4.8. Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit and he began to write this. He says, verse 8 and verse 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not for seconds. Tracked down, but not destroyed. I want you to listen. Just because we cannot understand what's happening or just because it makes no sense to us, that doesn't mean it does not, it doesn't make sense. It does happen. Just as we see that the whole story of Job's life in the scripture, when Job did not, did not realize what was going on, he didn't understand. He only knew that he was suffering. He was going through a dilemma. He, 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 he couldn't see the whole picture like the way you and I can see. We have the Bible. We can read. We know the beginning and the end of his story. We can read. We know. We have some knowledge. But he don't understand that. When we are in trial, challenging time, challenging times, God sees the whole picture. He knows the whole picture. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. And when we do not understand, we don't see the whole picture. The Bible teaches we can still trust Him. We can still trust God. I believe God was teaching Job two things here. I think God taught Job about the sovereignty of God. If you continue to see in Job 38 verse 4. Job 38 verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Job wanted to ask so many questions, but your God is throwing back. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? I think God was very gentle and gently taught Job that he knew what he was doing and that he had Job's interest in his mind and in his heart. God was also reminding Job there was, there was something that Job didn't, there are some things that Job didn't know and that he just needed to continue to trust him because God is sovereign. He is the Al Shaddai, the all sufficient almighty God. You may ask me today, Pastor, did God know about the COVID-19 or the or, or coronavirus or the spirit that we are going? Absolutely. It did not surprise God. He knows about it before it started. He knows exactly the moment when it's going to end. God is in control. Although we may not understand it, we bring our pain, our struggle, our grief. I mean, through this season, there's a lot of people suffering, there's pain, there's grief, even death. I just want to encourage you, church, my brothers and sisters, we can trust God because God sees the whole picture and He is in control. He is still on the throne. Hallelujah. The second thing that God taught Job is about God's care. God really cared about Job and God cares about you and me. In fact, in Job 42 verse 10, Job 42 verse 10, listen to what it says. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Hallelujah. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. What a beautiful God we serve. It's an awesome God. I want to tell you, I just want to tell you something here, church, my brothers and sisters. This story reminds us sometimes in the way we may not understand. We may not see the things right. Or right now we don't get the full picture. But God can turn every hurt, every struggle into, a, into an hallelujah. God can turn every hill into Calvary. And then He can turn the Calvary into resurrection, into victorious life. God turns every sunrise into a sunset. And you can count on that. Count on God. Put your trust on God. Truly, it is 
it's a challenging trial times we live now but we can continue like job let us continue to love god continue to serve god and continue to put our trust in god hallelujah amen i believe as you go back and continue to read the book of job you will begin to have a closer relationship with god putting him first loving him serving him and continue at all time no matter what you face what you hear trust in him hallelujah shall we pray hallelujah loving father we release all our cares to you fill us with your peace joy and strength upon each one of us we thank you for this church lord we ask you to bless and preserve each one of us for your glory as we continue to love you as we continue to serve you and as we continue to trust you father we give you all glory all honor we give you praise we thank you in jesus name may you bless and keep your church to your glory in jesus name we pray and all god's people say amen praise the lord wasn't that a wonderful word even as we uh, close for this morning we just want to give thanks to god uh, for pastor abel thank you pastor for sharing the word with us and uh, i just want to encourage us let's continue to meditate on the word let's allow the word to you know begin to sink to every part of our lives let it be application church and uh, we're going to close this time by declaring this is a powerful declaration coming in a song at your name the mountain shake and crumble at your name the oceans they roar and tumble at your name the angels will bow the earth will rejoice and the people cry out hallelujah at your name amen the mountain shakes and
high and lifted up and your name heals, Lord. Your name sets the people free, Lord, sets the captives free, Lord God. Your name, Father, brings hope, Father, to the homeless. Your name gives us a hope and a future, Lord. Father, we just want to worship your name all the days of our lives. We want to praise you. We want to declare that you are King and you are Lord of all the earth, Father God. We shout your name. Hallelujah. We praise you and we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Even as we depart from this place, Lord, may your presence be with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always in Jesus' name. Amen.